That's such a wrong thing. If you are a traveler, you have to come here. The view from here is absolutely insane. Look, in Bologna we'd pay probably at least six euros for two coffees like this, but here, yeah, it's half the price. There was some secret object, you know, a governmental place that was so secured. Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. We are in Prato today, a very nice city in Tuscany, just 15 minutes drive from Florence. And anyway, I think it's a pretty underrated city and I want to change that. I want to show you how cute is it and it has a very curious history. There are lots of curiosities about this place. So guys, without further ado, let's go and explore Prato. I just hope it won't rain today because I have no umbrella. Now guys, let's go with me. Look how cute this gate is and also the bridge and the walls so medieval so ancient and something that i've noticed already about uh, prat about the city is that it's been very clean by far like really clean all the houses are very neat and the roads are clean and everything is just so nice What you notice right away when you walk in the city center of Prato is the amount of smaller independent shops and I think that's really cool. Prato, by the way, is the second largest uh, city in Tuscany by population after Florence and I think you can really feel it here and that's insane that it's so, so close to Florence and tourists don't usually visit it, although I think that's such a wrong thing. If you're a traveler, you have to come here. In the 14th century, a certain man from Pistoia called Muschettino tried to steal what is probably the most important relic uh, conserved here in Prato. The Holy Belt, which is a Christian relic conserved here in Domo di Prato and it's been here for centuries, is uh, sad, according to the legend, to have been dropped uh, by Virgin Mary during her ascension. And Muschettino tried to steal it in 1312, but he didn't succeed and according to the uh, laws of Prato of those times his hand was cut and it is said that his blood could still be seen somewhere in the facet of Domo however I can see that today it's under the reconstruction so I'm not really sure that we'll be able to find the blood stains but still you can easily imagine how beautiful and majestic this place is at least from what we can see today since medieval times Prato has been uh, famous for its textile production and still today it's one of the major hubs not only on the Italian scale but actually worldwide on a global scale it's a major hub for textile production and since 2011 Prato has joined the Greenpeace's Detox program aimed at reducing the uh, waste and pollution caused by the fashion industry which is one of the most polluting industries in the world so this place for not only being a major business hub, a major textile production hub in Italy has also uh, made certain steps in order to be environmentally conscious and obviously I absolutely like it. This castle, guys, is my next point of interest today and good news, it's absolutely free to visit and I've heard that the view from there is spectacular. Prato has a really interesting history. Uh, in the 12th century, it was attacked by the troops of uh, Matilda of Tuscany. And you know, I'm very fond of that woman. And after that, the Signori of Prato 
recharge to another villas, to another places, and a free commune was created in Prato. And here is a curious fact. Since Prato was an urban center, but it wasn't a diocese, for centuries it was defined as terra, land, and not as civitas, as city. And I think that's really interesting. Now, let's go and explore the castle, because it looks absolutely majestic from here. There is a very slippery stairs that lead up here, although it's not too long, and the view is 100% worth it. It's so beautiful. The legend had it that on a particular sunny day you can see Florence from here. I can't see Florence yet, but I might be searching for the view of Florence. However, even if we don't see Florence today, the view from here is absolutely insane. Look over here. You can actually see the whole city. That's so beautiful, guys. Come here, have a look at these rooftops and all the colorful houses. I think this is so beautiful. A typical Tuscan city. And I think this is actually our first ever travel vlog from Tuscany, right? So that's the one to celebrate. And I absolutely love it. You know, guys, I've been to Tuscany so many times before, and this is the first time filming here, as I said before. And uh, what's really so special in Tuscany, and I've been noticing it for these whole years that I live in Italy, is the sky. The sky in Tuscany is of an incredible color, and I don't know why, I don't know wh wh why it's happening, but look at this color. It's so clear and so blue, and it's just, you know, the air in Tuscany is absolutely amazing. Now guys, I'm sitting right in the center of Prato, having coffee in a very nice place, in a very nice pasticceria with perfect view over Palazzo Pretorio, which is a very famous landmark and there is a museum there and I absolutely love it. What I love about these smaller cities is that they're so calm and so nice and despite being quite big actually, it's not that small Prato, it has this vibe of, uh, you know, slower life and calmer demeanor and I absolutely like it. And also, obviously, the prices in a bit less touristic places are way, way uh, lower. And that's a huge bonus if you're visiting less touristic places in Italy because we paid 3.30 for two cappuccinos in a very central place with uh, the table service. So they, offer, they often charge more for that and still you get to pay way less than you get to pay in bigger cities. In Bologna we'd pay probably at least 6 euros for two coffees like this, but here, yeah, it's half the price. And you know, guys, why, why not visiting lesser known places? That at least could be the reason. But also there are obviously so many incredible places here, museums, and we're gonna see them in just a few moments. And yeah, guys, the day is going on and I'm quite excited. Guys, I'm now right in front of the Museum of Textile where I was going uh, and I wanted to film inside and to show you more of this museum because it should be really, really good. However, when I went inside, I found out that I was not allowed to film, but it was not like I'm not allowed to film, I'm not allowed to post it anywhere. So no Instagram, no YouTube, nowhere. And I honestly find it really weird. They uh, told me that I had to make an arrangement in advance in order to film there, but it's not like I'm filming a, you know, full-on documentary or something. So I don't really understand this attitude. Uh, however, yeah, that's the situation. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't film inside, so I can't really show it uh, to you, but 
are now going to explore the Museum of Modern Art because Prato is the city that was projected with the future in mind. And there are lots of really cool uh, urban modern places, among which there is the Museum of Contemporary Art, the whole center of um, contemporary art. And we'll try to get inside there. Honestly, that's the first time that something like this is happening to me, so I don't really know whether we'll encounter the same problem in the Museum of Modern Art. Hopefully not. And hopefully I'll be able to show you more of that one. And yeah, no matter what, the trip continues and the mood is still high. Okay, guys, we're now going to the Museum of Modern Art. It's not located in the center and we could have probably taken a bus there. However, I really like walking in the cities that I'm visiting, uh, although it might take me like 30 minutes, but I think that's really fun because like this, you can explore the other side of the city, you know, the living side of the city and see how life is here and what it's like in the city that you're visiting. You can see it, you can feel it, you can smell it. And yeah, I think that's also fun, even though the architecture here is obviously not as nice as in the city center, still, that's really fun. Okay, guys, we're almost there. At some point on my way, I was trying to take a bus because it proved to be quite far from the city center, but I couldn't find where to buy tickets. So I was quite annoyed, but anyway, we made it and Hopefully, I'll be able to go inside and to film inside because honestly, I still don't understand what happened at the textile museum because it looked like there was some secret object, you know, a governmental place that was so secured that you could not film inside. And that was ridiculous, as for me. But here, look at this museum. It looks so good, I think. At least from the outside, it really looks good. Uh, looks promising. Looks very promising as to me, like a modern art center should look. Look guys, even the houses here are built in this modern style, so differently from the city center. And I think it's in a perfect harmony with the museum. I really like this area. Like, I mean, it's not your typical Italian city, it's not your typical Italian area, but still it's really cool. Something fresh, something new. I'm really excited. Well guys, what can I tell you? I think that if you leave the Modern Art Museum still thinking about what you've just seen, that's the right type of an exhibition. And I'm definitely still thinking about it. I liked it, really. Uh, the current exhibition here explores radical architecture and urban transformation, the uh, relationship between art and the cities, and the, the, the focus is uh, on the urban design, urban architecture. And I think that's, that was really cool. I really loved it. The most important thing about this museum is that the staff was extremely nice and friendly, and that was a huge difference from the textile museum. Like, I, don't say, I, I can't say they were not friendly. They were, but you know, all this secrecy and all this security really just put me off. Here the situation is very different. Everyone is uh, taking pictures and everyone is free to explore the exhibition and I really liked it. Currently only half of the exhibition is available for a visit because they are preparing a new one and yeah I would definitely come back here for a new exhibition for you know a uh, new uh, season in the museum because I loved it and I think you know as controversial as contemporary art is, still sometimes it's very refreshing to see something like that and to enjoy an exhibition like this one. And yeah, I definitely recommend you visiting this museum, guys, if you happen to be in Prato, especially since, as I said before, there are not so many tourists. So coming here, you'll find lower prices and you'll avoid the crowds of people. Although there were enough people inside, still it was not overcrowded. And yeah, I loved it. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked this travel vlog from Prato. I definitely enjoyed today. I enjoyed filming today. Even though we had some rough patches, still, I think we can call it a day. And yeah, that was a successful vlog. 
Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button because if you notice, I did not film my lunch, although I had lunch and it was very tasty, but I'm preparing a whole new video for you about Tuscan food and you know, Prata has a lot to offer in terms of food especially and you know, I'm quite a foodie, so uh, in a week or two maybe I will upload a new video about Tuscan food, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it and you don't miss any other travel video that I'm preparing for you. Also, please put a thumbs up, comment and share this video with your friends so more people can learn about Prato and smaller, lesser known places in Italy and also so I can make more videos like this. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you feel inspired to visit this place. Enjoy your day and travel more.